Here's why Danny Kay led a miserable life and heartbreaking ending. Danny Kay was a beloved entertainer known for his infectious humor and charismatic stage presence. He rose to fame in the 1940s and 50s with roles in classic films like White Christmas and The Court Jester and became a household name thanks to his unforgettable performances on television and in live shows. However, behind the scenes, Kay struggled with a number of personal demons that ultimately led to a tragic and heartbreaking ending. In this article, we'll explore the reasons behind Kay's miserable life, from his difficult childhood to his tumultuous relationships and struggles with mental health. We'll also examine the events that led up to his untimely death, and pay tribute to a man whose talents and legacy continue to inspire fans around the world. Kay was born on February 18, 1913, in the Brooklyn borough of New York City. He was the youngest of three sons born to Clara Nemirovsky and Jacob Kaminsky, both immigrants from the Ukraine. His father was a horse trader, but he later turned to tailoring to support his family in New York. Kay had always dreamed of becoming an entertainer, and he dropped out of Brooklyn's Thomas Jefferson High School to pursue his passion. He teamed up with a guitar-playing friend and hit the road, hoping to make it big. However, their act was short-lived, and they soon found themselves back in Brooklyn. After his failed attempt at show business, Kay took a series of odd jobs to make ends meet. He worked as a soda jerk, an office boy, and an insurance appraiser, but none of these jobs lasted. He made a costly mistake that cost his insurance company $36,000 in payout benefits, resulting in his dismissal. Despite these setbacks, Kay refused to give up on his dream. He found work as a tumbler, a general entertainer at the White Row Lake Resort in the Catskill Mountains in 1929. There he finally found a receptive audience for his talents and he quickly became known for his ability to make people laugh and have fun. In 1933, Danny Kay joined the Three Terpeshorians, a vaudeville song and dance act and embarked on a tour of Asia. While performing for audiences who didn't speak English, Kay had to get creative with his comedy. He developed a unique style that included nonsense dialects and exaggerated physicality, which would later become hallmarks of his career. Throughout the 1930s, Kay worked tirelessly to achieve recognition in the entertainment industry. He found a creative partner in composer and lyricist Sylvia Fine, who understood Kay's unique gifts and wrote songs that highlighted them. In 1939, Kay made his Broadway debut in the Straw Hat Review, which featured many of Fine's compositions and earned favorable reviews. The show marked a significant turning point in Kay's career. Kay and Fine were not only creative partners, but also romantically involved. They married on January 3rd, 1940, and their partnership would prove to be long, profitable, and tumultuous. The couple's collaboration continued to thrive, and in 1940, Kay had a successful nightclub run at New York City's La Martinique. In 1941, Kay starred in Lady in the Dark, a Moss Hart, Kurt Will, Ira Gershwin musical that finally earned him recognition on Broadway. His show-stopping performance of Tchaikovsky, a fine composition in which he rattled off 50 names of Russian composers in under 40 seconds, left audiences in awe. He continued to shine in the next Broadway role opposite Eve Arden in Cole Porter's Let's Face It where he once again showcased his talent for tongue-twisting lyrics with melody and 4F. Danny Kay, unable to serve in the military because of a back problem, spent much of the early 1940s performing both at home and abroad in support of the troops. In 1943, he made a decision to move to Hollywood to kickstart his movie career. He was already hugely popular and was received with open arms in Hollywood, where he was put under contract to producer Samuel Goldwyn. Kay began his Hollywood career with 1944's Up in Arms, going on to appear in a total of 17 movies at the rate of nearly one per year until 1969. Although many felt that his energy and distinctive talents were best appreciated in person, he became one of the big screen's brightest stars for at least a decade. Throughout his Hollywood career, he appeared in a variety of movies including Wonder Man 1945, The Kid from Brooklyn 1946, and a signature performance in 1947's The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. He had a talent for playing multiple roles in his films, making them complex and entertaining. Some of his movies, like Hans Christian Andersen, were beloved by children, while others, such as the holiday classic White Christmas, were enjoyed by audiences of all ages. The Court Jester, released in 1956, 
showcased Kay's incredible vocal abilities, and it included his most famous line, the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. The chalice from the palace has the brew that is true. Kay's final feature film was The Mad Woman of Chela, which he starred in alongside Catherine Hepburn. However, his career extended beyond the big screen. In 1948, Kay took his one-man show to the London Palladium, where he became an instant hit. The show broke attendance records, and the royal family even left their box seats to get a closer look at the performer's incredible talent. Despite his success in movies and on stage, Kay also branched out into television in the 1960s. His variety program, The Danny Kay Show, aired from 1963 to 1967 and won him an Emmy Award in its first year. Kay continued to make guest appearances on various shows and specials, but his most notable role on TV was in the 1981 movie Skokie, where he portrayed a Holocaust survivor to critical acclaim. In addition to his career in entertainment, Kay was also passionate about philanthropy. He was the first celebrity to serve as a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, UNICEF, in 1954, and he remained involved with the organization until his death in 1987. Kay traveled extensively to raise money for UNICEF, including a famous 1975 trip where he flew to 65 cities in just five days. For Kay, it was all worth it, as he had a deep love and respect for children and their well-being. Danny Kay was a man known for his many talents and achievements. His humanitarian efforts for children were widely recognized, particularly by UNICEF, who asked him to accept the Nobel Peace Prize on their behalf in 1965. In 1982, he also received the Jean Hersholt Humanitarian Award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences and was awarded knighthood by the Danish government in 1983. However, for Kay, it was all about the kids. Despite his reputation as a thorny and demanding man, Kay's passion for life and creativity could not be denied. He was particular about punctuality, considering it a sign of respect for others' time, but some found him temperamental nonetheless. His relationship with his wife was reportedly turbulent as well. In the early 1960s, Kay began conducting symphonies despite his inability to read music. This was at the request of noted conductor Eugene Ormandy, and he went on to conduct more than 50 orchestras, including the prestigious New York Philharmonic. While incorporating his trademark wacky antics such as conducting with a fly swatter, Kay gained the respect of respected musicians like violinist Zubin Mehta and Itzchak Perlman. Moreover, he raised money for various charitable causes. Danny Kay lived a life full of diverse passions and achievements. Besides being a renowned performer, he was a licensed commercial pilot, flying his UNICEF missions himself and even graduating to 747S. He was also a Chinese cooking expert, a baseball enthusiast who invested in the Seattle Mariners, a golf aficionado, and a ping-pong whiz. Kay nurtured his childhood dream of becoming a doctor by observing surgeons in the operating theater, donning a mask and gown. However, Kay's greatest legacy was his ability to connect with his audience and bring them into his world. He felt a strong sense of responsibility towards the public, demonstrated through his dedication to his craft. During the 1970 Broadway run of the Richard Rogers musical, Two by Two, Kay injured himself. Despite this setback, he continued his performance for 10 months using either crutches or a wheelchair. His unwavering commitment was appreciated by professionals in his field. Sadly, Kay passed away in Los Angeles, California on March 3, 1987, at the age of 74. He was surrounded by his wife and daughter. Danny Kay was and remains one of the most beloved and admired entertainers of his time, a true legend whose legacy lives on. Rest in peace, Danny Kay. Goodbye, legend.